Hi everyone, welcome back to Dalry Models. Um, the first video for the build-up of the LaFerrari by Tamiya. I've actually started going through the instruction sheet, working out where I'm going to be adding additional parts. So there's some photo etch to go on there, where I'm going to be adding some wiring, um, resin pieces, and various carbon fibre things. So at the beginning of every kit, I'll go through and I'll work out uh, action plan as to what I'm going to do like that. So the first thing I've actually done is to start with these photo etch pieces on the engine block. So if you look at this one here, you can see if it comes into focus, the detail, the extra detail that you get from the photo etch pieces. And there's some notches on the side of it for where you're going to add some additional wiring to it and it really doesn't want to focus today but uh, you can see the bit of bit of lettering on the side there and it's the same on on the other piece there as well and um, they replace some molded on plastic parts which don't have the notches or anything so the first thing i'm going to do is to get some extra thin um, and glue these pieces together Nothing really untowards or fancy with this. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the process for using this glue. The capillary action from it will join the two seams together and form a nice bond. And it is so because it, it's so thin, it uh, doesn't make a mess anywhere. So it's quite a nice glue to use. We just go around all of this quickly. Shaking the bottle because I'm uh, not got that much glue left in the bottom of it, and I need to replace it. You can actually extend these, but uh, I've not got round to it. So that's the first part of it done. So. The next few pieces, if we just have a quick look at the instructions, we have on here C49, which is this piece down here. So we'll just nip that off quickly. And C33, which is this one up here. C29, which is the block up here. C30, which is that one there, which I'm going off camera again, so excuse that, I'm obviously still new to this, and C27 is the other one I want, which again is up there. So once I've cut everything from the sprues, I will get my knife and carefully have a look at the notches that are left on there and carefully cut them off and you can see on the shape of this one that they're not actually a flat surface to go against so it's a little bit more tricky to clean these up side so it makes it's worth doing this to get a nice clean edge so whatever you're gluing against it's going to be not so sort of noticeable so I'll go around quickly clean all these pieces up and I'll do that off camera so not as to bore you but as you can see on here this piece here there's uh, lines going down the center of it so what I do with these is I will just scrape along with the blade and go around the whole piece to just get rid of it because um, it adds to the overall appearance of the finished item to 
make it look a bit neater. So like I said, I'll do all of this off camera and then I'll come back. So I've finished all of those scraping of those pieces now. So the next bit to do will be to glue this to the underside here. If I put it on the right side, which goes into there. Just like that. I'll put some glue on the inside of this. And then we want this piece here wants to go on that end. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to do that piece there. Just see if there's any orientation for it. Yeah, make sure I get it the right way around. It wants to go that way around. So it just sits sits on top of that there and that be careful it doesn't go side to side like that it's got to be all lined up nicely you see there if you squeeze that it it pops out so you want it to just sit just like that like that I should have sorted the glue out while I was off camera just then, but I didn't, so. There's a bit glue down there as well, hold that piece in. So then once you've done that, then if we turn it over, and then we can add the bottom piece here, which goes that way around. That way, that way around there. It goes in there like that. So it's actually got a bit of a overhang on that side. As you can see, it's not completely centralised. So again, a bit more glue down the down the centre line there. On here, and then just along this side here. Do that piece and then I'm going to glue this piece onto the end here which has got a little cut out square here which looks like it has an adjacent cut out there so it has a nice fit to it so again a bit more glue all the way around And then once this is done, we'll paint it at this stage. Um, I'll leave the exhaust and the headers off because I want to paint those separately because they'll be different colours. So that's it for now and I'll be back shortly to do some painting. Okay, so here we are in the spray booth. Um, I'm going to make a start on painting the engine and various pieces. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to be using the Zero Paints Grey Primer. You'll have to excuse the noise as I turn the extractor fan on. Um, for obvious reasons with these paints, you need to make sure you've got good ventilation and some way of extracting any paint fumes that come along. Um, ideally wear a respirator as well or proper breathing apparatus to avoid breathing anything in. So let's just turn the fan on and uh, we'll make a start. So to start off with, um, I'll do the main aim of what. Make sure you've got some paint coming out and then make a start on spraying. And anywhere where you've got metal parts, both wet parts, anything like that, you need to make sure you get a fine coat going over it to start with and build up the layers to avoid any problems going forward. And just do light mist coats all over it and just build it up gently. Um, and there shouldn't be any problems go along. So make sure you get an even coverage all around it, don't miss any parts. So you 
should be able to see is that your paint builds up any areas that you've missed or that need extra paint. Um, so get painting. I like to go at different angles and directions to make sure it gets in any areas that are difficult to access. To. All the nooks and crannies everywhere, uh, make sure you get a nice easy coverage. So that's the engine block done, um, move on to the main exhaust pieces. And the same applies again to start off with light mist coat and then build the layers of the paint up. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it there, a big gap right down the underside of the exhaust, but I'm not going to worry about that as it will be covered up with the belly pan, the, the undercarriage cover, uh, not visible as well, so you could fill it in if you really wanted to, but there's not a lot of point in it, it's not actually going to be visible on the completed model. If uh, you do something where it was, just get a bit of filler in. You can either use filler, build up the layers lightly, or you can use some plastic styrene to fill it in, or something similar. Uh, there's various options and things that you can do for filler, which we'll probably cover in another video. Right, second exhaust, same again. coat to start with and start building it up and even though it's grey plastic and grey primer you can actually see the colour change as you get the paint down so you can see any areas that you have missed and any areas that need extra paint Just make sure the airbrush stays moving and don't spray too heavily in any one area at any one time because otherwise you'll end up with getting runs and just making a mess of it which you don't want. So again even if you've got parts that are not going to be too visible you still want to do the best you can with painting it. Um, so onto the exhaust headers or manifolds or whatever you want to call them. different angles to make sure you've got good coverage and then I'm doing the fan assembly uh, to got what's called the belt assembly and the pulleys separately and then what I'm going to do for the covers is I'm going to turn the pressure right down on the pen so it's barely coming out and what we can do with that is, is you paint it, I don't know if you'll see coming out on there, is you start to get this speckled effect which represents what you'd see on the real vehicle and then you can just build up the paint layers as we did before until we've got a nice coverage of the paint and see if I can get into focus a bit. You start to build up this speckled effect. So it should give you a much better representation of what you'd get on the real vehicle. So again, just make sure you get a good coverage all over that. And the same on the second one. And I'll do the same principle for all paint coats that I put on these to give it a nice a nice effect. So in the overall finish it will look quite good. And that's probably running at around PS5 PSI 
on that. So I'm just going to go and clean the airbrush up to get the primer and then I'll move on to the next section. Whenever you paint any parts that you want to represent bare metal, uh, there's various stages that you can go through. But so if you want to add any effects to it, um, like peak stain or anything like that, you need to plan how you're going to do it. So for the exhaust that I'm going to paint, I'm actually going to start off painting them with Alclad 2 Lacquers V stainless steel. So to start off with, I'm just going to use their black enamel base coat um, to go over them. Uh, I'm sure there are much better black bases that you can use for this, but as I've got this one, uh, I'm going to use it so that I can finish it off and then I can move on to other ones. So I'm going to paint both the headers and the main exhaust pieces with this. And what you want to do with this paint is you want to run it at a low PSI and build it up in mist coat layers. Uh, don't try and go on too heavy because otherwise if you go too heavy you will find that the paint starts to move away from any raised areas and won't give you a nice coverage. So by building up in nice smooth mist coats we'll get a nice even coverage and a nice base for the metal finish. So on to the second one. And again this is probably running at about 10 psi. And again move the part around to make sure you get into all the small areas, don't miss any areas any part of it. And you can see it's not nearly anywhere near full coverage um, could be building that up. But as you work around the pieces to give the ones that you've painted a little bit of time to dry. If you do go a bit too heavy in certain areas you can just spray it with air to dry it off a bit and then go back in and carry on building the layers up. So we'll just run through all of these. back to the main exhaust pieces. And you probably want three or, three or four layers of this in using this method. You can start to see it's starting to get some shine to it now. It's starting to show nice black gloss finish. So I think in this case three coats will probably be sufficient. So we'll see on the third coat where we're at. coats don't go heavy with it so as not to get runs because this is very very thin paint so if you go too heavy you will get areas that pull away from the edges and get puddles and things so you don't want to do that you don't want to get that but you can see that they're getting starting to get a nice finish to them now One last coat to turn the air pressure up a notch. Just to finish it off. Okay, go all the way around, make sure no air is in this. When you're on the final one, it's a good idea to actually pause for a second and take a good look, make sure there are no areas that you've missed that you want to go over again. And like I said, if you have gone too thick in a certain area and you want to build it up a bit more, just cut to air, um, 
blow it off a bit to dry it off a bit and then go back to the paint again. So you can see that you're getting nice coveries now ready for the metal base coat, uh, metal colour coat. Again, check it over, make sure there's no areas you want to go back over. And then onto the other parts. And this paint will take a bit of time to dry, so don't try and rush into the Alclad silvers straight away over the top. You need to give it time to dry and harden a bit before you go into those to get the best finish. So that will do for now and again I'll clean the airbrush. Right, so while I'm waiting for that black to dry I'm going to move on to painting the gearbox of the engine with zero paint aluminium and I'll use the same paint for the pulleys that go on the front. So when I said I was flicking off to go paint, clean the airbrush, I'm not doing a full clean each time, it's just a blow through with the thinners just to clear the cup and make sure that the route through is clean. Um, I tend to do full cleans in between actual paint sessions. So again, the same is going to apply with this, and building up thin layers and not, don't try to rush it, don't try and put it on too thick, don't, or expect to perfect coverage straight off. Just build it up nicely, and it doesn't take long at all to get a nice, silver metallic shine to it. Again, air pressure is not too high, it's around 15-20 psi on this. I'm only doing the gearbox on this as the actual engine block is a different colour, so I'll be masking this off once it's dried a bit and moving on to a different colour. So I'll do the same with this paint on the pulleys, which don't take a lot and then I will move on to the next section. Moving on now to, back to the covers, I'm just going to turn the air pressure back down again, to very low pressure, and I put some white primer in this time to give it a nice base for the red. And as you can see, when the paint goes on, it looks very speckly. but the overall effect that it will provide will give you that realistic looking covers that you get on pretty much all Ferraris. Turn again on this one. The white gives you a good idea so you can see how it's actually going on. See the, see the effect as it builds up. But again, don't go heavy with this, otherwise you will lose that effect. I've just put some red paint in now to finish these off. Um, it's actually a mix of gloss and matte to give it a bit of a not too matte finish, but I don't want the gloss finish either because that's not how it should look. So, as, from, as before, build up it gently, very thin layers, at very low pressure. And this has got not a lot of thinners in it, so that as it comes out of the airbrush, drying quite quickly and at the low pressure it gives us exactly the speckled effect that we want. Just a bit there. So then to the 
remarkable. Again, you can see the effect there as it's coming out. It doesn't come out smooth like you would want on, say, the aluminium engine block or especially on the body panels. You would not want your paint looking like this. You want that nice and smooth. But if you look at any reference photos on pretty much any Ferrari, they all have this speckled finish on them. I believe it's from the sand casting that they're made with. So then, just check for anything that's missed, and you can see the effect there from it. So now we've given the enamel black a bit of time to dry on the exhaust. We're going to move on to using the Alcar 2 stainless steel, as I mentioned earlier, um, to paint those up. So a little bit in the airbrush. And then just check the air pressure. You want you don't want the air pressure too high for doing this either because again a fair thick paint. So check the paint float and then start laying it down. With some of the outcloud paints you can get away with going straight over the primer with but Personally, I find having the black base coat first tends to give them a nice finish. So, we'll build a laser in thin mist coats again. Don't try and go too thick with them because, again, it won't go very nice if you do that. heavy with these you'll start to see that they get start going white and start looking a mess which you don't want once it gets to that point you can't really recover from it so you want to avoid that from happening but that comes with practice and experience with them. pressure and the distance that you're spraying down there it does that. So that's the last bit of painting those. And I will go off and mask the end of the block and then we'll move on to painting that. So I've got the engine masked up and what I've done is how I do it is to cut thin bands of masking tape to follow the line that you want to mask off and then cut slightly thicker ones um, and build it up. And if you want to save on masking tape, a little tip is to get a plastic bag, which most of us have spare ones of these from the packaging that comes with the kits. Um, so there's plenty around for doing that and um, it will save on the tape because masking tape isn't always necessarily a cheap thing to buy, especially the Tamiya stuff. So it means that you're not going to get any overspraying. I just realised there's a small gap that I just missed where the bag's opening up. So I'll just put a little bit more on there and that should give us a nice cover so that we're not going to get any of the paint on the aluminium part that we painted. So for the block, I'm going to use Alclad 2's dull aluminium and I'm actually going to paint this straight over the grey primer rather than putting a black base coat down. Um, because it's thick enough that you don't need that. So I'm going to turn the compressor back on and then we'll get spraying. So, 
set the paint and then again just build up the layers slowly. At the moment I'm just going at one angle to start to go, but as it builds up you'll see that it's starting to give a nice coverage and as I said it's relatively thick paint compared to some of them so it doesn't take many layers to build it up and get a nice nice coat and nice coverage on there so that will do and as you can see it's nice even finish on there and if we then take the masking tape off take this round to take that off you start to see the difference between the two so I'll just do this I'll just turn that off now because I'm not going to spray anything for a minute um, so you can actually hear me a bit better so I'm just going to peel masking tape off now so you can actually see how I've built it up you've got to be careful when you're actually removing this that you don't um, scratch any of the paint that's underneath and then there's a little bit on the edge there. I'll put on. Yeah, it's important as well. Any areas that um, shouldn't be that colour. I can't find the side of the edge now. Um, any areas that shouldn't be that colour are actually covered up. And as you can see, there's a couple of corners on here that should be the original colour. So I want to just remove that bit of masking tape there as well to put on and then you can see you've got a nice band around there where you can see the colour difference I don't know whether it how well it shows up actually up on the camera but uh, the dis distinct colour difference between the two metal shades which resembles what you would see on the actual main car for real so we can do some extra work on that to enhance it the shadows a bit more um, which will be the next step so I'm actually going to move on to doing some of the heat staining on the exhaust now so what I've done is I've put some burnt iron into the airbrush so I've just checked the flow of it I've actually also taken the end cover off of the airbrush so that I can get a bit finer and looking at your reference photos to see where the exhaust staining normally occurs uh, from what you normally see it's around the bend areas so I'm just going to carefully where there's bends on here check that back we've got something coming out a little bit more air pressure just to make sure it's flowing nicely you don't want it coming out like that a nice thin flow. So, it's actually drying on the tip of it, so you don't obviously don't want to do that on your part of the spray. So I'm just gonna cover those. And it's going on quite heavy on this part but for the area that it is I'm not bothered about it because it would get a lot of heat so I don't know whether on this car this is actually correct whether they have ceramic exhaust I've not actually seen the headers of this car for real, I'm just using some artistic license, so I'm just going to do the same on these pipes. What I've also done is I've just quickly gone over the front uh, silencer with some Alcry Chrome um, just to give it a slightly different shade uh, from the pipes. to break it up a little bit so it's got 
there's something, something different to see to me. So, again, just go around where where this pipe. I'm not doing too much on these because, for the most part, you're not actually going to see anything of it. But it's nice to uh, to do, and it also it's good practice uh, for when you come to one where it is more visible. So that's all I'm going to do on those exhaust pieces and the next bit will be the uh, final assembly of the actual engine block. Since you saw me painting the engine and various pieces, um, looking through the instructions for the panel that it all attaches to, there's carbon fibre sheet on the additional decal sheet to go over the side here and there's one on that side as well and obviously I want to fit the engine to it I don't want to be doing the carbon fibre and everything after I've done that so what I've done is I applied it applied the microsol to it to get it to conform nicely and then once it was dry I got a sharp knife and cut along the edge so that I can separate the pieces so I can put this one to one side for now because I don't actually need that um, so this is the base tub as you can see there's a bit there that needs a little bit more work um, but that's nice and neat so I've obviously painted this in Zero's semi gloss black this panel here is a photo etch panel along with this bit here being an extra piece the kit parts actually molded in clear and there's a couple of additional pieces that go underneath there which I've not bothered to even fit those because there's a panel that goes over it that I was planning on painting black as you can see so there's not a lot of point because it's only going to get covered up I've also painted the bottom of the rear axles or wishbones whatever they're called and given those a light wash so while I was doing the washes I've done the engine as well so you can probably see on some of it it just brings out the shadows a little bit more um, just to give it a bit more more depth on the engine and painted the oil cap there so that's ready to carry on with the assembly now so the first bit that I'm going to do is attach the belts and the pulleys which I just brush painted the actual belt with I think it was XF1 which is um, matte black so to apply this I'm just going to use some super glue quick tip is to get a milk bottle cap or something um, to put your glue in so you and then use a cocktail stick because it makes it nice and neat you're not going to make a mess anywhere and with the cocktail stick you can just get it nice and neat actually in the hole and it's not going to go everywhere and you don't need a lot for this um, it's hardly hardly anything required and then there's a couple of small notches that just fit in there and you can see there the pulleys contrasting with the dull aluminium engine block and the same with the actual gearbox there you can see it's a lighter shade even with the wash on it's uh, still you can still see the difference in the metallic shades there which I hope comes out on the camera okay so after I've done that the next couple of bits are the exhaust manifolds and again I'll just use a little bit in that hole there and a little bit in that hole there and then get the exhaust manifold you need to make sure also that you get the correct one for these so you've got this bit here which wants to go pointing down towards the back where the gearbox is and just slots into the holes there and the same again on the other side Bit in that one and bit in that one. Again, just put the line pins up with holes and it'll just push in. Doesn't need a lot of glue on those, they're uh, not going to go anywhere. And then onto the covers. And what I've actually done here is I've scraped 
the paint off the top of it. There's no paint on the undersides of them anyway. Um, so I'll use some Tamiya glue for that. Um, just to give it a bit of a, a stronger bond. So you just brush that on. Again, you don't need loads of glue on this. Just enough for it to actually make it and get it to grip. And then glue that one on there. And then same again on this one. Just a little bit glued along the edge. And they're only one side that they can go on. They've actually got notches underneath um, to line them up. But you can see on there, I've done a little bit of detail painting on all of the bolts and the where the leads connect to, um, just to bring the detail out. And if I come a bit closer, I believe you can see the speckled effect on that as well that I was talking about when I was actually painting it. Um, so it's a nice effect that that creates. So the next bit is to actually mount the engine in here. So I'll go back to my super glue for this. So I want a little bit in there. A little bit in that one. And a little bit in the back here where the gearbox mounts. And then you've got these two engine mounts there and then this one is one for the rear. So just slot those in there and then that one goes at the bottom. As you can see, so it fits nice and simple. And then onto the engine, the exhausts. And on this side here, you've got a pin there and a pin there and they correspond if we get the cocktail stick to point out you've got a notch in here and you've got a notch at the back here and then the top of it here just wants to go to the bottom of the exhaust where we pointed to before where we said about the position of it so I'll just put again I'll just put a notch of glue in there and a notch of glue in there and the thing with super glue is you don't want to use loads of it less is more as they say in uh, in the case of super glue um, and then make sure that the exhaust sits straight when you've glued it in and then same on the other side Slide in there, and then that pin just goes in there, and then again, just make sure that they actually line up straight because that's going to be important when it actually comes to fitting the rear bumper that that is positioned as it should be. And the last thing that I've done for this part is to paint the rear drive shafts and on these I've done X18 in the centre or zero paints version and then the titanium gold on this end and then the actual joints itself I've used XF1 um, just to give it a bit more character on the pins on the side where they fit into the engine you've got two different ones and you've got that one there that's got two notches and this one here that only has one so make sure that it corresponds with the correct notch on the engine side and you can see that one there has the two so the directional have got to only go one way because they're slightly bent so again a little bit of glue in there and then just drop that in there just slots in twist it slightly and 
that's it. And then the last piece goes in here. And that's actually got a large notch and a small notch. So again, make sure that it's the right way around. And then just slide it in, give it a slight twist just to get it to fit. And that's it. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.